Under the effect of a variable magnetic field, a beating of the electron beam is observed. The deviations are exactly the same as with a fixed magnet in the corresponding positions. The Maxwell-Faraday equation implies that a time variation of a magnetic field should produce an electric field whether or not there is a conducting circuit. The electron beam should be deflected by the rotational electric field implied by the Maxwell-Faraday equation, in addition to the deflection by the varying magnetic field. But no one has ever observed any additional motion resulting from the electric field postulated by Maxwell. The famous article of 1905 by Albert Einstein exposes in its introduction a consequence of the equations of Maxwell. If for example the magnet moves and that the conductor is at rest, then an electric field of a certain energy appears near the magnet which generates a current in the parts of the field where there is a conductor. It is absolutely false to claim that the motion of a magnet produces an electric field around the magnet. Such a phenomenon has never been observed contrary to what Albert Einstein states. This electric field postulated by Maxwell has no effect on an electron beam. Maxwell imagined that the electric and magnetic forces were carried by currents of an ether. These inseparable electric and magnetic forces surrounded electric charges and magnets, whether stationary or moving. Maxwell interpreted the experiments of Ampere and Faraday on the basis of a unification of electric and magnetic forces in an ether carrying the two actions which would be perfectly inseparable. Electron beams blatantly disprove this radical link that Maxwell established between electric and magnetic forces. Michelson's experiment eradicated Maxwell's ether. But the absolute link he established between the electric and magnetic forces, carried by his ether, has never been questioned. But do charges and magnets, whether stationary or moving, always have both a magnetic and an electric field? The effect of electric current on magnets was discovered in 1802 by Domenico Romagnosi, then again highlighted by Christian Arsted in 1820, who left his name to this experiment. A compass needle is deflected by an electric current. Arsted's experiment is an indisputable experimental fact. Since then, Everything seems to flow together with perfect logic without the slightest hiatus, especially with the discovery of the electron. Maxwell was already convinced that currents in conductors are flows of particles. Electric current is the flow of electrons in a conductor. The speed of electrons in conductors is supposed today not to exceed a few hundredths of a millimeter per second, but no one has succeeded in measuring it. Arsted's experiment therefore shows that the magnetic field of the conductors would result from the flow of electrons. The fact seems all the more indisputable since the beams of electrons, the cathode rays, have a magnetic field. Cathode rays were only discovered at the end of the 19th century. In 1895, Perrin's experiment showed that they are negatively charged. Thomson made the bold suggestion in 1897 that cathode rays are particles which were called electrons. It is quite easy to check that electron beams have a magnetic field by measuring the voltage induced in coils by an electron beam. This beam must be pulsed to have a variable magnetic field which can induce a voltage in the coils. I made the measurement with a beam of a little less than 1 mA and 10,000 turn coils in series. The induced voltage is sent to an operational amplifier connected to a digital oscilloscope. The result is beyond doubt and was of course already known. However, as unimaginable as it may seem, the magnetic field cannot result from the motion of electrons. It's amazing that no one has noticed a strange redundancy. Electrons have an intrinsic magnetic field, 
especially when moving in conductors, but when moving they have in addition another magnetic field. In the conductor traversed by a current, there are thus two coexisting potential causes of the magnetic field, the motion of the electrons and their intrinsic magnetic field. Such a coexistence is contrary to the principle of simplicity, the very famous Occam's razor. Scientists will absolutely refuse to have to respect a principle that is a matter of philosophy. It is therefore necessary to add to this argument an experimental fact. Scientists have long known that beams of electrons, protons, or ions exiting cyclotrons have no magnetic field, although they travel at speeds of tens of thousands of kilometers per second. This fact seems entirely contrary to what I have just said about electron beams. In fact, the difference results from the position of the sensor. I put it in front of the gun. In cyclotrons, it is positioned after several turns of the beam. To unequivocally verify this disappearance of the magnetic field, it is necessary to measure the magnetic field of an electron beam before and after a 90 degrees bend. This deviation must be obtained by an electric field. After the deflection, no magnetic field should be measured, much like in cyclotrons. It is therefore that the magnetic field can only come from the intrinsic magnetic field of the electrons and not from the motion of the electrons of the beam. This field is oriented at the exit of the electron gun so that the beam has a magnetic field in front of the gun. The 90 degrees deflection electric field of the beam does not modify the orientation of the intrinsic magnetic field of the electrons, which is therefore perpendicular to the beam after its 90 degrees deflection. The second sensor cannot detect a field oriented in this way. A small detail will not have escaped the specialists. For the intrinsic magnetic field of the electrons to be detected by the coils of the sensors, it must have a rotational structure and not a dipole structure, which would be analogous to a tiny bar magnet, as postulated by the standard model of the quantum mechanics. There is indirect evidence for this phenomenon. Rowland's experiment shows that an electrically charged disk, rotated, has a magnetic field. I carried out a similar experiment but with an electric current in a rotating conductor. The magnetic field of the 4 mm diameter copper tubular conductor, traversed by a pulsed current at 100 Hz from 0 to 2.5 Ampere, rotating at 260 revolutions per second, is measured by induction coils. The field in the rotating conductor is about three times greater than the field of an identical current passing through the stationary conductor. The measurement with induction coils provides a decisive element. The coils must be crossed by the field lines. In the rotating conductor, the electrons describe helices as in a solenoid. However, the magnetic field lines of a solenoid are parallel to its axis and therefore do not cross the coils. The considerable increase in the magnetic field during the rotation of the conductor cannot therefore come from the motion of the electrons. It can only come from the intrinsic magnetic field of electrons. Maxwell's speculations would turn into reality phenomena that have never been observed.